In this video, we're gonna go through how to make more money in real estate. We're gonna cover many different things, such as mistakes, commonly done even by myself when I got started, th so things to avoid, and also some secrets that I use as well on all my properties. One of the most common things a lot of new people do, or even seasoned people, is they tend to push value or underestimate the amount of rehab that a property needs. This is a key thing that you wanna avoid when doing your numbers, because you could potentially even lose money if you do this wrong. So once you figure out what your ARV is, what your rehab costs are, and the margins that you wanna keep, make sure that you stick with those numbers. What happens is there's there tends to be a flow process, right? So it, it, whether you're doing a deal or two or five a month or quarterly, annually, whatever it is. So really, ultimately, you make your money on in the buy. When you buy the property is where you have, it's where all your profit really is. From there, how do you keep your profit? You gotta stick to budgets, timelines, all these different things that we'll get into. More importantly, make sure that you hire professionals around you. So let's get into it. So starting with professionals, you want to make sure that you're, you're dealing with professional contractors. So dealing with a professional contractor, you're going to be able to outline everything that needs to be done with the property. Make sure when you're talking with them on that contract, what's excluded. So there's no surprises during the rehab that could throw you off and cause you a delay in getting this product or that house to market, right? So what I do often is have a date where we all agree on that this is the date that this property is gonna be done by the contractor. Obviously things come up, so we have, a we have a variable in there that we factor into it, but with all that being said, we have a date that we all agree on. From there, we then back into, like let's say they don't finish on time. If they don't finish on time, what's that cost you? It costs you money, it should cost them money as well. You wanna make sure everybody's driving in the same direction and is incentivized to finish when you guys all agree on it. Now, also, so that could penalize them financially and maybe they get paid or paid less or a penalty per day that they don't finish. But I also believe in rewarding people for finishing ahead of time just the same. So every day that they finish ahead of time, they also get rewarded. Why do I do this? Time is money, so you might as well get everybody on the same page and champion towards the same goal. This goes for all different tradespeople, whether you're working with a general contractor or tradespeople, make sure everybody is on that same page and reward and have this penalty just the same. Other than that, you wanna make sure that you also have a solid realtor. Who is the best realtor for that particular house in that area? Maybe not just listing agent, but you wanna make sure that selling agent, and here's why. If you have a good selling agent, that means they're the ones that are selling the most amount of houses in that area. If they're following your progress, they probably already have a buyer for your property. So as long as you're doing all the great things ahead of time, you could probably sell the property before it's even listed. So one thing to think about is no matter what size the project, let's just say you're dealing with a $100,000 house or a million dollar house, the process is still the same. It took me a while to, to understand this fully until a good friend of mine who was, this was early in my career, he was a very successful real estate investor builder. And he was like, John, I don't do a project unless I'm going to make at least $100,000. And I thought, wow, kind of a jerk, right? But as time has gone on, I realized he was right. The projects, they take the same amount of time, energy, and effort so if you're able to scale that up, your rewards or wins are much bigger. Think about it. What is your time and energy and effort worth? As long as you're dealing with the exact same process, you might as well make more money doing it. So again, just thinking about what market you're in and if you're able to go up in value. Sometimes when you go up too far in value, your time on market actually could, could actually hurt you depending on how high you go up. So something to think about as well depending on, you really wanna be able to flip these houses as quick as possible. When you're actually looking at time on market, look at the time on market on the more expensive houses and go up to a certain point, see what is that sweet spot that's selling a lot. And maybe you have to go a few neighborhoods over to get to that, that spot. But the same 
energy and effort often goes into the same houses that are two, three times more expensive. So one of the tricks that I use, I'll go to a neighborhood that maybe houses are selling for a lot more. Like everybody, you know, those famous people and all those, you know, they live there, right? Those really expensive houses. And when I walk those houses and I'm looking at those, I, I see the little touches that they do. Often people refer to them as the wow factor or even jewelry, the jewelry of the house. When people come in, they have this emotional connection to it. They think, oh my gosh, that's really cool. Maybe it's the, it's the most current trending things to do to a house. And you don't typically see those in maybe less expensive houses. So what I try to do is, can I bring something similar in without making it seem cheap or cheesy? So something nice, some nice jewelry to make that house pop to where someone walks in and is like, oh my gosh, I just saw this on this house that's you know two, three times more expensive, where you're able to bring it in and people have that connection and instantly it, you create that vibe and people want to have the pro that property because of the little touches or jewelry that you've added to it. If you're liking this content, do me a favor, go below and subscribe. So the other people that I like to bring in, I like to bring in a professional staging company and photographer. It's imperative that you have these two things. Often, maybe in the beginning, I had realtors that would you know, not necessarily do professional photos. Listen, it's all about casting the net and making people want to come and see that property. And if your photos aren't on point and the property's not dressed correctly, meaning staged, and staged nicely with new current furniture, not stuff that your grandmother has in her house, unless that's the house that you're, you know, you created. Maybe you're doing a vintage look. I don't know. But what you want to do is you want to make sure that your house is on point, the furniture matches the house that you just rehabbed, and that you're able to capture that visually so people look at it and say, I want to go look at this house. If you're not doing that, you're doing the months of work that you did a disgrace. So make sure that your realtor spending that money getting the professional photos or you need to do it for them. The reason for it is, again, I say casting the net. And when you cast the net, what I mean is you want the most amount of people to look at and want to come see your property. The more people that do, you create a sense of urgency. Let's just say this. Let's say you didn't, okay? And you don't cast that net and then people kind of drizzle in there may not be a sense of urgency for them to put in an offer, right? They may be like, there's something missing with this house. Maybe, maybe I'm not seeing it. They're not seeing it. No one really wants the house. Let's go look at the next one. But let's say, for example, you cast that net. A lot of different people want to come in. You have this, you know, people milling around, people excited about the house. That's going to create that energy where you don't probably just get one offer, you get multiple offers because of how much energy is around the house. People get fear or loss, they don't wanna lose out on that opportunity. That's what you wanna create. You wanna create that excitement, that wow factor, you wanna be able to capture it. And if you're not doing these things, you're doing, again, an injustice to all of your hard work, your GC's of hard work, everybody's. Keep the momentum going, do these things, keep it on track, so you make more money. So we talked about looking at different opportunities as far as like if you're investing in lower priced houses, maybe bumping that up a little bit or maybe a lot. Also keeping your mind open to different types of opportunities in real estate, such as commercial. Sometimes real estate investors, they just miss out on some of the opportunities because they're not paying attention. Make sure that you're well-rounded in your networking so you can network with some of these people doing stuff that you're not. You'll learn a lot from them. For myself, it took me almost 20 years to get started in commercial real estate. It's way too long. People kept telling me, John, you need to look into commercial real estate. And by the time I did and understood it, now when I'm flipping houses, I'm flipping houses to take the profits and I put them in commercial, which the margins far exceed what I'm getting in residential. Anyways, food for thought, keep an open mind so you can look at opportunities that are crossing your plate or maybe those blind spots where you're not even seen. So stay well networked and keep your eyes open and your mind. So the commercial, some of the commercial people that I'm networking with are obviously agents, commercial real estate agents. It's a different, it's a smaller network than residential, but it's very tight. And once you get your foot in, you're going to be presented with some really good opportunities. So 
keeping that agent. Also, other commercial real estate investors and builders, there's there's so many different ways in, to invest in commercial. With commercial, like be, just throwing it out there, commercial, a lot of people just think, oh, office or whatever, but you do have office. You could do executive suites where you just rent out just this, uh, an office and your price per square foot goes way up as far as what you get in return. You have retail. You have industrial or warehouse. You have a lot of people now investing in storage units as well. Um, myself, like we do retail, we do medical apartments. You have work, live. Um, you have so many different options. And some of the things that you could convert, like we convert th things like hotels to apartments. We convert office buildings to apartments. So whatever current market trend is going on, typically if there's a shakeup in the market, one area gets condensed and maybe a different area starts to explode. So again, office is light right now, which then makes it like if you could convert that to multifamily, if that's something you can do, you should look at those type of opportunities. In these areas, you could take advantage of the market condensing in one and flip it and create that margin, if you will, by changing the use. We have a digital course that covers everything that we've just talked about in more residential, commercial real estate, how to find lenders, you name it. If you found this content useful, if you wanna schedule a call with us, we have a calendar below. Pick the time and date that works best for you, and we'll talk to you soon.